Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I got Wrath of Kahneman here. He posted this. FIS's Trax Payment Factory is a single payment hub for domestic and cross-border payments that appears to be Ripple enabled. And so when we take a look at this flowchart, we see FIS, uh, their Trax Payment Manager here right in the center. We've got this flowchart outlining corporate clients here, monitoring and reporting approval exceptions, manual payments, payment collections, bank statements. So this is the whole payment process going through this system, the Treasury and Risk Manager, uh, and then finally going out to the banks here, right? Uh, through Swift, API, eBIC, so on and so forth. But we've got FIS, WorldPay, and RealNet. We know uh, FIS and WorldPay, Ripple customers. Down here, PSP utilizing Ripple as one of those payment processors. Now, we also can't forget, right, FIS, uh, they are a Ripple partner. Uh, this article was uh, from back in September of 2020, and this is when they partnered with the Clearinghouse to join forces to bring real-time payments uh, to U.S. banks. So we already know they are Ripple enabled and now uh, they just came out with a recent document here and I'll list this document here, it's a PDF. I'll list it in the description of this video so you guys can peruse at your leisure if you are interested in looking at this further. Uh, so I wanted to thank the Wrath of Kahneman for posting this. And this guy's from the Cryptic Poet here on Twitter, listed Korean firm Gameville to acquire $28 million stake in Ripple partner Coin1. So we know Coin1 is a Ripple partner and now South Korea based publicly traded video game development company Gameville is set to acquire a 13% stake in local crypto exchange coin one for about 31 billion won or around 28 million US dollars. Announcing the news on Monday, Gameville said the acquisition involving 87,474 shares of coin one is expected to be complete on June 11th. With the investment, Gameville looks to find new business opportunities in the crypto sector uh, and increase corporate and shareholder value. So uh, we know in game trading, of course, a very, very popular, well, first of all, gaming, one of the most popular and one of the most lucrative entertainment industries on planet earth you thought it was tv you thought it was movies you are sadly mistaken and i know you know maybe some of you play video games maybe some of you don't uh i think it's more of a generational thing but i think that uh you know ever since gen x uh and maybe kind of later stage millennials ever since they got their nes their nintendo entertainment system um the industry hasn't looked back right uh it used to be that only kids played video games but uh you know the video games got more sophisticated and uh, it just captured a bigger and bigger audience as the decades went on. So now we have this huge industry. There are so many different facets to the industry and payments is definitely one of them. And so Gameville realizing obviously uh, that using cryptocurrency for in-game payments could possibly be a benefit. And I know to some extent this already happens. Uh, and so here's just a screen grab with Ripple Cross ENF expands quickly in newly open Korean remittance market this back from March of 2020. Uh, and also just uh, outlining the fact that Ripple is a partner with Coin One. Uh, uh, so Coin One Transfer offers South Korea's first blockchain-powered remittance service. Amazing news here coming out of Korea and for the video game sector, perhaps at some point running on the XRPL for in-game payments. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. And I saw this guys from AMB Crypto, another victory for the realist XRP movement as one more exchange restarts XRP trading. That's right, popular Japanese cryptocurrency trading platform Dcurrent Exchange has finally relaunched XRP trading according to XRP Owl. Dcurrent has in fact relisted the XRP token and allowed its trading in several pairs. Earlier this year, many exchanges uh, decided to halt XRP trading and deposits due to the US security Security and Exchange Commission's lawsuit against Ripple, uh, but after the news of the lawsuit broke, other major exchanges like Coinbase and Binance US have also, or rather had also, halted XRP trading. Uh, and just a month ago, XRP supporters had taken to Twitter to urge crypto exchanges to relist XRP, and that followed with a hashtag, namely the relist XRP hashtag, uh, and that hashtag did go viral over social media. So, Dcurrent here finally relisting XRP. Of course, this is a Japanese exchange, and I know, um, you know, the delisting is a bigger, or rather the halting of trading of XRP. I really should differentiate the two because they are very different things. The halting of trading of XRP is only a major problem in the United States at this moment in time. But of course, these exchanges uh, cater to different customers, different uh, client bases. Some of them are international, some of them are local or national. Uh, and so this one here in Japan, but they are relisting XRP. Regardless, I think this is great news for the XRP community, great news for XRP volume, XRP liquidity. That's it's just going to get the price up higher eventually once we look for that next leg up. Uh, I also saw this guy. So this news uh, with regards to the general cryptocurrency ecosystem, and this brought to us by Michael at Val5Links on Twitter, uh, CNBC has reported that the social media giant Facebook is prepared to start trialing its USD-backed stablecoin DM and is trying to obtain a payment license from regulators in Switzerland. 
So the DM story goes right back to June of 2019 when governments around the world were getting, uh, you know, their knickers in a knot when Facebook said, yeah, we're going to come out with our own cryptocurrency and we're going to start using it and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that didn't go over so well. Um, they got a lot of backlash and uh, they did cease operations or cease uh, developing the cryptocurrency for a little while. Now they've returned after facing a strong rejection from the US Congress and regulators globally and seeing most of its big name partners back out. Facebook has made some alterations to its crypto project Libra, uh, now known as DM. It is tied only to the US dollar rather than a basket of fiat currencies from several leading countries. Could it have been that uh, the US government was putting pressure on Facebook saying, look, the global reserve currency is the US dollar. We do not want you to tie your currency to a basket of currencies. You must tie it to the US dollar. And maybe they caved. I don't know. I'm just speculating at this moment in time. Uh, try okay, so trials to begin later this year. The DM Association is now negotiating uh, the receiving of a payment license with regulators in Switzerland. And the cryptocurrency is expected to be released for trials later this year. A person familiar with the matter told CNBC the coin will have to pass anti-money laundering checks. According to the anonymous insider this would be a small scale dm pilot and will focus on payments between individual users so it sounds like uh you know they are still in their preliminary stages but now a social media giant namely facebook looking to uh reveal looking to announce and to deploy their cryptocurrency uh once it gets all the clearances so i wonder how this is going to change the game of course you know facebook uh one of the most uh, or probably the most popular social media platform on planet earth so with millions of users online perhaps i know they already have a marketplace if you can use the facebook dm coin on their platform is that going to change the game interesting questions that we have to ponder uh guys i also saw this from xrp crypto wolf so uh with regards to the sec lawsuit the xrp community files a motion to intervene in ripple's fight with the sec uh so there are more developments with this Attorney John Deaton has filed a motion to intervene in Ripple's legal battle with the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission on behalf of the similarly situated XRP hodlers. In a memorandum of law which outlines legal arguments in support of the motion, Deaton writes that the interests of investors are not adequately represented either by the SEC or by the distributed ledger company affiliated with the controversial token. So this was an interesting response, guys. Uh, the Deaton Law Firm uh, posted this uh, document, and so I will link this in the description of the video. I wanted to read you guys this. The SEC does not adequately represent the interests of XRP hodlers. The law is well settled that if there is no investment intent, a transaction does not fall within the scope of the securities laws. Uh, when a reasonable purchaser is motivated to purchase by a consumptive intent and not for purposes of making a profit, the SEC has no interest to protect under securities laws. Then he gives Telegram as an example. Clearly the SEC is either unaware of XRP hodlers' use of XRP or they are choosing to ignore such use for litigation reasons. The SEC repeatedly categorizes XRP hodlers as speculative investors incapable of developing independent utility and contributing to the overall growth and development of the XRP ecosystem. So he is spelling it out. The SEC clearly does not think that XRP hodlers are sophisticated enough to realize that there is a use case for XRP beyond speculative investment, and uh, XRP hodlers have proven them wrong. So uh, John Deaton and XRP hodlers combined are trying to prove them wrong. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that there are a lot of people in this space interested in the ecosystem. Uh, you know, partially it's because of Ripple, but also because of the spring initiative now called Ripple X. Lots of utility being derived from the XRPL. Uh, and so let me continue. The SEC claims that XRP hodlers ultimate goal in seeking to intervene is for XRP to become available again for trading on digital asset platforms so that move-ins may buy and sell XRP as a speculative investment. Uh, and so uh, he gives a source to that effect. This statement alone proves that the SEC fails to truly understand or appreciate the threat to XRP hodlers' interests that the overly broad and vague allegations contained on its complaint against Ripple and XRP hodlers have caused. There are literally hundreds of businesses and developers, independent of Ripple and its executives, utilizing the underlying technologies of XRP and the XRPL. Many of those developers and individuals and small businesses have been slowed or halted due to the allegations that today's XRP itself is an investment contract and thus a security. 
So I could keep going on. I mean, this is a fairly lengthy document. You guys can uh, read it at your ledger. I will link it in the description of the video. Uh, I don't know if you caught Jeremy Hogan's video. The other thing Jeremy Hogan pointed out, which I thought was quite interesting and somewhat sassy, I suppose, was the fact that this is a very unconventional case, right? Uh, usually the SEC is there to protect investors and uh, XRP hodlers are saying, no, SEC, we do not want your help to protect us. We trust in Ripple. We trust in XRP, the cryptocurrency. You you are actually doing, ironically enough, the exact opposite of what you are set out to do. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. Again, I will link this in the description for those of you guys who are interested. And we've also got to keep our eye on China and what they're doing. Guys, I saw this from Matthew L-I-N-Y on Twitter, PayPal to launch local wallet in China. And get this guys, it focuses on cross-border payments. Now, I thought this was somewhat peculiar because China is usually very China-centric when it comes to their technology. And so the fact that PayPal is doing this and it's focusing on cross-border payments, let me read you a little bit of this. So PayPal plans to set up a local wallet in China focused on cross-border payments. In January, the US fintech company became the first foreign firm with 100% ownership of a payments platform in China. But until now, PayPal has been quiet on its plans. Hannah Q, the China CEO for PayPal, told CNBC that the company is looking to launch a domestic wallet, but instead of it competing with the dominant players, namely Alipay and WeChat, uh, for domestic payments, PayPal will focus on cross-border payments. In a panel session hosted by CNBC at the Boeo Forum for Asia in the province of Henan in China, Q elaborated on the plans. Our future business is mainly on cross-border transactions. Our value is more from overseas. In our overseas markets, there are over 300 77 million individual users and over 20 million corporate users. So is this the ripple killer? Is this the XRP killer in China? An American company, let's not forget, uh, looking to facilitate cross-border payments through an app. Well, first of all, no, I do not think so. We have to remember that the market is very, very big. And, uh, you know, a lot of these smaller valued cross-border payments, there are a lot of people doing this anyway. And so, you know, to fix that pain point, to fix that problem, I think a lot of these remittance services uh, are realizing that there is already a problem and uh, you know Ripple is already integrated with a lot of these companies worldwide so I do not think this is going to be a Ripple killer per se uh, however, we do need to pay attention to what's going on in the United States because if Ripple is not able to work in that particular market, the American market, uh, that could have uh, wider leading implications globally. So I saw this from Michael at Val 5 Links and I wanted to bring this up because I thought this was some positive news, something that we needed to hear uh, in order to feel maybe a little bolstered, feel a little bit positive with regards to a crypto framework in the United States. Sources close to the Biden administration have revealed that a new crypto regulatory framework is being developed. So you are hearing it here. It is being developed. They are currently working on it. Fox Business's uh, Charlie Gasparino, speaking in a segment on Bitcoin ETFs, said that sources have told him that the Biden administration is just beginning to develop a regulatory approach on crypto. They are just beginning. Now, how long is this going to take? Your guess is as good as mine, but they are on it. They are paying attention. They realize that this is an issue. Here's some positive news. According to him, newly appointed SEC Chair Gary Gensler is waiting on the Treasury to enforce regulations. Uh, the guest panelist said that his sources told him that the administration is in the early stages of developing a regulatory approach to the crypto market. Matters being discussed primarily include infrastructure and taxation. So, of course, uh, the IRS wants their share of the pie. He also notes that Gensler will look to develop specific guidelines following more general guidance from the Treasury. So Gary Gensler waiting on the Treasury to get uh, some sort of guidance on this. Referring to the market's price correction, Gasparino said that it could be related to news that the U.S. was cracking down on the asset class. The Biden administration is going to react to cryptocurrency and essentially it's widening use. And it's more on this notion of a crackdown from the Biden administration. Uh, so that could be another reason why we have seen a bit of a pullback. However, Gasparino does not believe that the U.S. will drop a nuclear bomb and ban cryptocurrencies, of course. He states that too many American investors are entrenched in the market and that uh, essentially would not be a likely option. As for news on the Bitcoin ETF, there is a huge debate going on and so it goes on into uh, the Bitcoin ETF. Let me read you guys this. The U.S.'s crypto position reports emerged earlier this year that the Biden administration was worried about the state of the crypto market. These concerns included the rising presence of China's digital yuan as well as investor protection. 
the administration has only offered sparse commentary on the matter so far. So China, obviously part of this narrative. Uh, now we're seeing PayPal launching a local wallet in China focused on cross-border payments. We are making headway in the Ripple and XRP case, at least hodlers are, uh, you know, pointing out that the SEC really isn't doing XRP hodlers any justice. This will definitely impact the case. This will definitely impact the judge's decision. That all said though, you know, we are seeing improvements. We are seeing more exchanges relist XRP. Uh, we are seeing more developments with payment providers and uh, current Ripple partners. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think the Biden administration will figure this out in time so that the US is not left behind? Tell me down in the comments because I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.